The United Federation of Planets has always been a beacon of hope in the galaxy, and its Starfleet is so much more than a military force. The Federation fleet is used for humanitarian relief in a number of crisis scenarios, and it can even be a force for education. In the case of global pandemics, the Federation has contingency plans to deal with them. This is the Mbenga class hospital ship. Another design from the old FASA Star Trek role-playing game. I've always loved this design. Parts of it almost look like it could be some kind of warship due to its aggressive nature. Although it has no weapons, it is much like a warship because its job is to fight a medical crisis and even global pandemics. The Mbinga class is named for the renowned doctor who occasionally served alongside Dr. McCoy on the original Enterprise, a physician specially skilled in Vulcan medicine. These ships were active a bit before Jean-Luc Picard took command of the Enterprise D. It has the classic saucer hull attached to a main drive section, low slung forward swept warp nacelles, and attached to this is a long module that is most likely the hospital section. So in a way this ship acts like a kind of tug able to swap out this medical module and possibly other types of modules at will. It would be interesting to design some variants from this forward section. But most importantly, how would a ship like this be used? Especially in our situation now, where at present we are still facing a global pandemic. I thought of making a video about this ship a long time ago, but was worried the pandemic would be over before it was relevant. It is still going on, so this video will still be relevant at the time of release, unfortunately. And I have to say, the way our planet has dealt with this seems incredibly sloppy compared to what I envision the Federation would do. What if our planet was a member of the Federation, and how would they help? Now, don't laugh yet. I know our civilization is presently far too primitive to qualify for membership. Still, if it were, a number of things would happen. Most likely, one of these ships would have arrived in orbit near the beginning of the pandemic and immediately begun gathering data. It would provide the means for advanced testing and tracing for the entire population and begin researching the nature of the virus. Several of the planet's leading pathologists would make regular visits to the Mbenka and coordinate or train if necessary on the most efficient means of testing, tracing, and data gathering. Now for policies such as mask mandates, isolation, and various rules, Starfleet would have no rule in dictating those. The Federation has always trusted the social structures of its member worlds to know what the right policies are for themselves without interference. Most importantly, the Mbenga team would immediately begin to outline an aggressive education campaign to account for any gaps or misconceptions the planet has about the nature of viruses, vaccines, and pandemics. On most Federation member worlds, this would not be a problem since a stable society, stable enough for the Federation anyway, has to reach a bare minimum of education of its populace. Of course, a ship like this cannot take on millions of sick and dying in its medical ward. It can, however, take in many patients for research purposes. It can also provide the planet with the technology required for various treatments. And when vaccines are finally developed, it can assist with replication methods and distribution. This is why the Mbenga has a relatively large amount of transporters and shuttles. So done and done, the pandemic is likely to be quickly eliminated, and this works great for Federation worlds, but what about non-member worlds? Of course, a world like Earth in its current state, direct contact with the Federation may disrupt our society's development. For planets that have made contact, and for any number of reasons are not members of the Federation, all that Starfleet can do is offer aid to planets suffering from global pandemics. The problem with such planets, as is the problem with ours currently, is that help from the Federation may not really be help at all. The Federation is not in the business of imposing mandates or vaccine requirements on the population of said planet. Even if a vaccine is quickly developed and given, the distribution of it may fall short. The pandemic may be used as a petty political pawn and for misinformation spread due to its primitive political system. Certain organizations may try to profit from a vaccine that is supposed to be freely given, which would hinder their distribution of the vaccine 
to those in poverty, as well as prevent a total purge of the virus. Some organizations may want to keep some of the virus going to continue their profits. Now this all kind of ties into the Federation's prime directive and non-interference policy. It is much smarter to help those who can help themselves than waste time and resources on those who would squander this aid. Every planet would have to be evaluated on a case-by-case -case basis. But such operations can do wonders for the Federation diplomatically. Perhaps we could learn from the Federation's purely humanitarian approach. And although it may only be a metaphor, perhaps we could build our own Mbinga class hospital starship. Well, thanks for watching, space friends. Be sure to subscribe and comment. Tell me what you think the Federation would do about a global pandemic. Until next time.